In Leviticus 8, we begin to see the consecration of Aaron and his four sons. They are being established as the priesthood, specifically the priesthood of the Torah. But the establishment of Aaron as priest, the filling of his hand, as it is referred to in the Hebrew, was not the beginning of his role in Israel, nor was his death the end of his priesthood. Instead, we see that Aaron played a significant part from the starting point of the Exodus alongside Moses, and his priesthood was established to be an enduring priesthood. Aaron was the brother of Moses. Both of them were from the tribe of Levi. Aaron first appeared because Moses felt unable to speak, and because of that, Elohim directed them to work together. Moses was chosen to act, in a way, in the role of Elohim. He was set as the Elohim for Pharaoh, and Aaron acted as Moses' prophet. Aaron was the representative of Moses, and he did much of the speaking and the signs in the place of Moses. Moses and Aaron worked alongside each other in speaking to Pharaoh and in speaking to the sons of Israel. As the sons of Israel went into the wilderness, Aaron continued to hold this role as a leader among them and as a representative of Elohim. Effectively, Aaron and his sons were already beginning to serve as the priests, even before they were officially anointed. They were starting to act in that role prior to the construction of the tabernacle such as we see at the giving of the covenant on the mountain. While we can look at Moses and Aaron as filling the leadership role among the sons of Israel, this wasn't something that was explicitly commanded from the beginning. Instead, it is almost a byproduct of events, even if it was an intended one. With Moses, rather than being told that he was commanded to be leader of Israel, he was told to go and bring the people out of servitude. And with Aaron, he came into the picture after Moses expressed his aversion to speaking. Was Aaron chosen simply because he was the brother of Moses and because he was a good speaker? Clearly, Elohim will favor whom he will favor, and he will choose whom he will choose. The choice of Aaron and his sons became the commanded priesthood. It became the command of the Torah when the laws regarding the construction of the Ten of Meeting were given. Aaron and his seed are the ones commanded to serve at the Tent of Meeting. This choice by Elohim is reaffirmed throughout the Torah. Elohim made this known in a number of different ways. Yahuwah spoke to Aaron directly at times. Aaron was made a prophet, and he received words from Elohim alongside Moses and also apart from Moses. Elohim also made it known through signs. Signs were given to confirm Aaron's priesthood. Aaron's rod budding and bringing forth flowers and almonds was a sign given to reaffirm Aaron as priest, and that others were not to seek to supplant that role. The priesthood had already been chosen. The commands of the Torah also make it clear that Aaron has a unique role. He performs the Day of Atonement ritual, which covers over all of the sins of the sons of Israel once a year. This is something that he and his seed must do, according to the Torah. And only Aaron is allowed to burn the incense, one of the commanded rituals of the Torah. No one is allowed to near, he who is not from the seed of Aaron, to cause incense to smoke before Yahuwah. Only Aaron is authorized to do it. Therefore, no other priesthood can fulfill the commands of the Torah. Aaron and his sons, his seed, 
are the commanded priests of the Torah. Aaron's priesthood is the only one that can fulfill the commands of the Torah as they are given. It doesn't matter what priesthood came before. It doesn't matter what priesthood is thought to come after. As far as the Torah is concerned, it is the priesthood of the commands. It is an enduring priesthood. The ritual that Aaron performs when he is anointed to be the priest is also supposed to be done by his sons. Whenever the priest from his sons is anointed, he performs the same ritual. It is an enduring enactment. And take note that this is through his sons that this is taking place. The priesthood is not zigging and zagging through his daughter's descendants. The lineage described in the Torah goes through the male line. In this case, it is through Aaron's seed. This anointing of Aaron is a priesthood of duration, and it is for their generations. The generations of Aaron, his offspring, still exist today. The Levitical priesthood through the sons of Aaron has been chosen to stand and attend in the name of Yahuwah. He has been chosen, he and his sons, for all of the days. There is only one priesthood that is commanded in the Torah, and that is the priesthood of Aaron through the tribe of Levi. He is the only one that is able to perform the rituals commanded for the tent of meeting, which is the commanded holy place of the Torah. And we can look at the events described in Leviticus 8, which is the performance of the commands given in Exodus 29, and think of them as past events. But the fact is that if the people are going to return to that which is written in the Torah, the commands of the written Torah, like we see foretold in Deuteronomy 31 through 10, then these rituals will be performed again. If Israel is going to return to his ways, his commandments, then we can expect this ritual to be performed again when the Ten of Meeting is reestablished, because they are both integral parts of the written Torah.